city of the city of Providence waited for their electricity to be restored in their homes after Hurricane Irene uh, cut off power to many in our state. WJAR-TV uh, Providence simulcast the audio portion of its newscast on Clear Channel's WHJJ-AM Providence. This arrangement allowed uh, locals to receive the TV station's around-the-clock coverage on battery-operated radi battery radios, which was obviously a very important service. Uh, in our state, we have a wonderful facility, a school called Meeting Street, which is an organization that provides individual learning programs for thousands of children with developmental disabilities. And uh, Meeting Street is really allowed to tell the story of its wonderful school uh, to the community each year during its annual telethon on WPRI TV. Uh, this four hour commercial free telethon pre time programming and all production for the event is done in house by the station. Last year, the telethon generated $500,000 from phone donations and long term corporate commitments tied to the event, and it's raised uh, billions of dollars over the years. Uh, the local newspaper and WNRI AM in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, carry on the Milk Fund, which is a local tradition that started in 1936 as a way to help struggling families. And each year through the month of December, multiple fundraising efforts in Woonsocket raise money toward the purchase of milk vouchers. Uh, another example, uh, this past fall, listeners tuned in to WKKB-FM in Providence for its two-day Promesa y Esperanza, Promise and Hope, Radiothon, which raises funds for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. The broadcast is carried out in partnership with 15 sister stations throughout the country to raise awareness of childhood cancer within the Hispanic community and to help St. Jude continue to offer treatment to all children, regardless of their family's ability to pay. This year's effort raised more than $100,000 in WKKB's listening area alone and more than $630,000 between the 16 stations combined. And just one final example, Lynn Media, which owns WPRI-TV in East Providence, established the Minority Scholarship and Training Program. Each recipient receives a two-year scholarship for up to $10,000 per year, which can be used towards school expenses. And in addition, Lynn Media provides each student with hands-on training through a paid internship program at one of its television stations around the country. Uh, the Minority Scholarship recipients are assigned full-time positions at Lynn Media upon graduation and success, a successful completion of the training program. So these are just some examples, and I know there are examples like this all across the country, where local broadcasters are really making a difference, not only helping raise needed resources for nonprofit organizations, getting information to listeners and viewers, emergencies, but really uh, helping to strengthen our communities. And I, for one, want to acknowledge the local broadcasters and say thank you. And I hope these examples help illustrate the value of our local broadcasters. And I really thank the gentleman for organizing this special order hour and for the time. And I yield back. I, I appreciate the gentleman's uh, recognition of that and the very thorough um, list of examples uh, of the incredible public service that our broadcasters do in the, in the Northeast. Thank you very much for that. You know, it occurs to me, Mr. Speaker, as I listen to my colleagues talk about the importance of local broadcasters, that, that they really have multiple public service roles. Certainly it's a public service, isn't it, to be able to give the news, to deliver the, the sporting games, to deliver the weather, to deliver emergency information for public safety, uh, to let people know what's going on in the community. That's an important service. But the gentleman from Rhode Island, Mr. Cicilline, brings up, of course, many other charitable things. And I've participated in many charitable events that, that were good, that raised a decent money for important causes. But when a broadcaster gets involved, it adds value. It raises awareness. It, it brings sometimes celebrity to it. And, and, and you, uh, you can see a charity lifted up by virtue of the fact that a local TV station or a local radio station, or in some cases multiple stations, took on the cause. Not because there was anything in it for the, the broadcast station, not because there was anything in it for the manager. Sure, sometimes there are programs that, that have a sales component to it that you can go out and sell, but by and large, these are pure acts of public service, pure acts of charity, that just a little bit of airtime, just a little bit of you know, local personality at, you know, that's attached to a cause can validate the cause, elevate the cause, bring awareness to the cause, and create momentum for a cause that generates all kinds of other private sector involvement 
whether it's volunteers or money, in most cases, both. And we can solve a lot of problems um, when we get an, a broadcaster involved. I've had the opportunity um, to be part of a very special pro program that I know a lot of my colleagues have been a part of, whether out here or back at home, and that's Honor Flights. Um, it was a, a local broadcaster in Fargo, North Dakota, that saw a national story about uh, the Honor Flight program that flies World War II veterans to see the memorial built in their honor. And, and so WDAY radio and television took it on in Fargo and created the Red, Red River Valley Honor Flight and flew four, uh, four flights of veterans. And during that time, they broadcast leading up to it to bring awareness so that the veterans themselves could sign up. Then they broadcast the trips themselves to bring awareness and to honor these men and women, these heroes of the greatest generation. And then, of course, brought the celebration home in a way that you couldn't do without without that involvement. That resulted in another honor flight um, chapter being raised up in Bismarck, where I live, and I became the chairman of the Rough Rider Honor Flight. And we had five flights out of Bismarck, and KX, the KX television network in, in North Dakota became our broadcast partner. And not, only, not only did they help by raising awareness, which helped me raise money, which helped us get more veterans signing up, um, but it got the whole community involved. And at the end of it all, they provided a documentary, uh, a video documentary of the experience so that every veteran and their families who participated had that wonderful memory in, 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 a, uh, in a DVD that they could watch for the rest of their lives. Uh, just this last weekend, I was on a radio show in, in uh, Fargo called Heroes of the Heartland. It's on for uh, an hour every Saturday um, where a local veteran hosts the show, and it's all about veterans. And the show is, uh, I hope it wins an award for, for what it does for veterans. While I was on the show answering questions about legislation dealing with veteran issues, people would call in and say, did you know that the VA in Fargo is holding a public information meeting in, in a neighboring city on Saturday at you know, whatever time where veterans can come and... and uh, air their grievances or give their appreciation or learn about the VA. And I thought, wow, how cool is this that just because somebody knew of something, they not only, not only was the, the radio station there to sp spread the information, but the listener became the newsmaker. They became the broadcaster. That's the other neat thing about um, local radio especially. It provides an opportunity where everybody is a broadcaster. If you see an accident or you, you know, find bad weather or you see something happen that you want to alert the public about, you have that opportunity now with new media meeting broadcast media. So it was, uh, it was an honor to be on Heroes of the Heartland. Um, you know, I, I have um, the great privilege of, of having, uh, representing the entire state of North Dakota. That's a big congressional district. Now, it's not as big as Montana or Wyoming or, or Alaska, but it's pretty big. And, um, and I try to have a lot of town halls like we, many of us do. We have a lot of town halls. But I had the opportunity working with broadcast partners now where every week I have a one-hour talk radio town hall on uh, multiple stations, uh, KFYR, KFIRE, uh, AM 550 in Bismarck, sort of the flagship station, uh, KLTC out in Dickinson carries it, uh, 1100 The Flag uh, is really where it was, where it was birthed in Fargo. Um, KTGO up in the Bakken, the heart of the Bakken in Tioga, carries the, the talk radio town hall. And people have the opportunity to either call me live on the air and ask a question or call in an 800 number uh, and leave a message for me if they can't call during the show itself. And, and it's broadcast statewide, and then it's rebroadcast again in the evening um, and, and delay. And it provides a great opportunity for me to be in touch with my constituents and, uh, and for them to talk to me and for me to be able to talk to them. As you can tell, Mr. Speaker, I, I'm just, a, I'm a big advocate for free over-the-air uh, broadcast uh, media, whether it's uh, radio or, or television or, or certainly both. And I think that even in the, the new media era, and I appreciated Mr. Crawford's thoughts on this, uh, that, um, that we can, we have this opportunity still, that, that there's still an important role for free uh, broadcast radio and television, that, that even with all the new media, that it only, in fact, enhances the importance of free over-the-air broadcast. So with that, I want to I recognize one other member. You have a minute for us or two, Blake.